these are all sort of little microscopic worms in here and I've just splashed a load of this down the back of my leg but I'll cut Hello folks, hope you're all doing well as we walk up to the plot here it is an absolutely gorgeous day it is absolutely beautiful this is about half eight on Sunday morning and I've got absolutely loads of stuff to do loads and loads and loads of things going on today I've got about the next four or five hours up here to get through it all so I'll have to get a shifty on but as always I'm not going to do it in one big long video I'll sort of get things broken up and split up into sections and put them out throughout the week so speaking of which over here we have got some salad crops in it to go these are all different kinds of lettuces over here we've got some spring onions here some beetroots that are going to go out these are turnips and sprouts further over here they're going to go back home to the wee greenhouse where they're going to get potted on and propagated on into bigger pots what else have we got to do let's have a quick wander down here and see what i've got i've got a bag over here and we've got let's just grab these we're going to be putting this down today, Nemer Slug. So they're nematodes, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit on that. Uh, let's have a look over here. Look at this. Look at the look at the root bulb. Look at the flowers on it. I've never known it to flower like this before, and especially down at the end here, we've got one, two, three different flowers. So we'll be getting a shot of them. They'll have to come off. Let's have a walk over here. I've got two trays of sweet peas that I've just popped over the fence there. So if we walk over this way you just come this way you'll see this area here this is all just a bit of a mess we're going to be putting an archway in here that the sweet peas will go on and then further back there where you see all the weeds and things like that that's going to be a flower bed and i think is that, is that all we've got to go oh, no let's let's have a little wonder up here let's see what else we're going to have on the go this week all right we'll just scoot around the corner just have a look and make sure I don't trip myself up and that is this bed here you can see it's got the environment stuff on the top so yes we're going to get some carrots sewn out but I'll take you through the technique I'm going to use for that and how I'm going to try and grow or try, or try I think try, try is the, the important word there try and go really nice really straight carrots we, we've done it before and we'll try and do it again but I'll take you through that whole method anyway I think this first video it's going to be all about sorting this bed out here this is one of my favorite beds i love growing different stuff in there it was my first ever raised bed so i think we'll get the salad crops out in there and we'll get them growing so i'll just get set up and i'll be back with you in just a jiffy so slight change of plan to what i'd said in the intro there i think i'm going to do the nematodes first because i want all the soil done and sorted before i start planting stuff out as opposed to pouring these on top anyway let's give you a bit of a a close-up shot there to the screen so you can see them so this is nemeslug it's a type of nematode and what are nematodes tiny little microscopic worms they live in the soil they live in the soil naturally what does this do this boosts the amount of them that you have in the soil and this particular variety here nemeslug kills slugs the little worms are natural predators of slugs and it's a great natural slug and snail defense pest control sort of stuff so you're not using any of those horrible little blue pellets or anything like that that people don't like that cause problems for food chains and the environment and stuff like that and it's really effective i used it for the first time last year and it was absolutely brilliant and it's dead simple to use it couldn't be any easier so you order one of these packs admittedly this pack here and it says here it treats up to 40 square meters I, I push the limits of 40 square meters quite a bit because I've got 200 square meters here. I, d I don't do the whole plot, you know, I've got paths and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe it's doing about 100 square meters or thereabouts. But yeah, I, I push the limits. So it's, it's dead easy. It gets delivered. It's about 15 quid for this. It's a little bit expensive, but it's brilliant for best control. Absolutely brilliant. When you get it delivered, it looks a bit like this. And you can see there's a best before date on there so usually you get around about a week that you get to use it and as soon as it gets delivered you need to keep it in the fridge keep them nice and cool because all those little worms are in here but they're not active they're dormant which is why you keep them cool in the fridge so what you have to do next is make up a stock solution so we'll ever have a look around i've got two watering cans this one here i'm going to pop the nematodes in there mix it up with water to make the stock solution then the second one, if I grab this, I'll use the stock, a little bit of it, and then we'll top it all the way up with water, and that's what we'll pour over the beds. One thing to note, 
is that this watering can has a pretty fine rose on the end of it. So what will happen if I try to use this, the nematodes will block it up. So if you've got one that's got a, a more coarse rose, got bigger holes on it, absolutely brilliant. I think that's what you're supposed to use. I don't, I just tear that off and I just use a nozzle and I sort of scatter it about. Anyway, what are we gonna do first then? Right, so nematodes need to be put on wet soil. You can't put it on dry soil and ideally you need to keep the soil wet for about a week or two afterwards as well. Unbelievably, here in Scotland, we've had no rain for about the past week. So everything is just a bit, it, it's not bone dry, but it's quite dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do water and can after water and can. I'm gonna water the whole plot so it's all nice and moist. That soil's nice and wet. Then we'll get this mixed up and then I'll take you through putting it out. So I'll get that water and done and I'll be back with you once that's all sorted. Right, so first part of the job done, I've been around the whole plot here and I've given everything a good water. Next thing to do is to mix this up inside of here. So this pack here, say it covers about 40 square meters and what it says on the pack is to mix this here with around about four liters of water. So I'm just gonna pop that now. This is a 10 liter watering can and it's about half full. I'm never, you know, you can be massively accurate if you want and, and water it out and, and spend loads of time doing that. That's not my sort of thing, you know, I like to uh, do around and about. And you see, I've, I've used these before and they've worked really well. And I'm just going to use this bit of wood, this sort of stick here, just to give them a good mix around because it's, it's quite clumpy when it first comes out of the packet. And you just need to get that mixed up in the watering can there and we'll give that a good mix around there yeah, well right that's a good mix so i can still see there's a a big lump in there you know you could use your uh, your big kitchen mixer really would be ideal to do this but we'll keep uh, we'll keep going with the wooden stick method as it's worked in the past there we go that looks a lot better and what we'll do next let me just lean over here and we grab this packet again because I keep going back to the instructions. So this is our stock solution. So what you do is you take 0.5 litres of this and you mix it with about 5 litres of water. So again, another 10 litre watering can here. So what I'll do is I'll take about a litre and add it to this and then top it up with water. And again, I'll remove the rose. Right, now that that's all had a good mix, this has got approximately nine litres of water in it. And what I'll do, we'll top up that, about a litre in there that's going in. And you can see when it's mixed all nicely, because it comes out of there sort of all, uh, all kind of cloudy, I guess, when it comes out. So that'll, that'll do. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop over there, I'll grab you off the tripod, and we'll have a wee wander around and I'll show you the sorts of things I'm gonna, gonna use these on primarily and that sort of technique that I'm gonna use with the, the watering can without the rose on the end of it. Cause you say, if you, use, if you use a fine rose, if you use the one that comes with a watering can, it's just gonna get clogged up with the nematodes and it's gonna block it, they're not gonna come out, they're gonna get stuck on the rose and it's not gonna be very effective. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So I'll come and grab you and I'll be back with you in just a jiffy. So there's a couple of different beds that I'm going to start off with the nematodes on and you'll have to excuse the dodgy camera work because I'm going to try and do this with a watering can in one hand, putting them out and holding the camera in the other hand. But here goes nothing. Let's, let's spin you around first of all. So this bed here, you might remember from last week, this had the potatoes in it. So the potatoes are all buried in there. Yep, sometimes the slugs do go after the potatoes. So here's the watering can and I'm just going to do this. Just sort of spreading that all the way over and I can feel, just to give you something to laugh about, that these are all sort of little microscopic worms in here. And I've just splashed a load of this down the back of my leg, but I'll come to that at the end of the video and tell you why that doesn't matter. So over here, you have to excuse my shadow actually, let's just move that out of the way. We've got the broad beans and I can see a couple of these have already been nibbled. Um, I think we've got a mix of pigeon damage and slug damage, but again, we're going to do this, and what I'm going after here, you know, we've done the potatoes, and these ones here is we're going after the sort of the green leafy ones, the ones that are targets for slugs. So if I come over here, just now, I'm not going to put any in here where the shallots are because they're not really a target for the slugs. Slugs don't care about alliums. The same over there with the leeks, and over there under that green cover where the garlic is, 
they're not going to go on there but this bed here where we've got the pack joy and we've got the radish look you can see let me show you little signs of slug damage on the leaves and here as well on the radishes so again this is the sort of area that we want to be protecting and using what I'd call a, a valuable pest control. You know, it's, it's expensive. It's 15 quid, that box, for, for 40 square metres. So it's not, not cheap, that's for sure. So you need to use them carefully and sensibly. Right. That's me just dropping the watering can, by the way, if you're wondering what that noise is. What I'll do, I'm going to go and finish off the whole of the rest of the plot with that. You say concentrating on certain areas first. I'm going to go after the carrot beds next. No carrots in them at the moment, but I'll come to that in a bit. Then I'm going to go all the way around, do all the others, and we'll see what we've got left. And right at the end, we'll do the alliums. But I'll come back to you in a bit because I want to chat to you a little bit more about the nematodes, the things that they do. And I mentioned about spilling on my leg and what have you and stuff like that. And we'll have a wee chat about that. Back with you in just a jiffy. Well, that's this one pretty much done, folks. I mentioned that I would come back at the end just to mention a couple of things there. One is I spilt nematodes all down the back of my leg. Now, it, it, it's pretty grim. You think they're tiny little microscopic worms that live in that mixture that I've just put in the soil. It's nothing to worry about, right? They naturally occur in the soil. These are naturally occurring tiny, tiny, tiny little microscopic worms. They exist in the soil as it is. They exist in your plants. They will exist in things that you eat. Nematodes are prey specific. That's the one good thing about them there. So that one that I've put down there, that's only going to go after slugs and snails and nothing else. I've used another one before that goes after leather jackets, which are the, the little grubs, the sort of larvae of the, um, the daddy long legs of the crane fly. And it worked absolute wonders because we had a problem with that last year. And one final thing to mention <coughs> is that nematodes are not some sort of magical silver bullet that's going to get rid of slugs forever from your plot and you'll never get any slug damage whatsoever what they really are good at is controlling the slug population you'll never get rid of all the slugs and snails and things like that around and about they'll always exist but by using them i can keep the population down certainly within my plot keeps it down it's natural it occurs in the soil by itself we're not using the little pellets it doesn't affect further on down the food chain and things like that which is really 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 important anyway that's me done for today i think i'm gonna go on and get some carrots sown on such a beautiful day and i will see you on the next one thank you very much for watching bye for now folks